First up, though, let's talk to newly elected Labour MP for Aberavon, uh, Stephen Kinnock, who joins us now. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good morning, Julia. And uh, congratulations to you getting re-elected. An awful lot Thank of your you. colleagues, though, fell by the wayside. Now, Brexit and Jeremy Corbyn, those seem to have been the two big issues, very intertwined. Um, you were one of the Labour MPs who campaigned openly for Remain, uh, wished the Remain would happen, but then actually came round to the idea we're going to have to accept Brexit and try to broker a deal pretty much over the whole of the last year. Do you think that's what kept you your seat? I think that uh, our failure on nationally was a combination of weak and incompetent leadership by Jeremy Corbyn and the team around him, uh, the disastrous decision to back a second referendum which alienated our leave voting heartlands, and uh, a manifesto which read like a Christmas wish list. Uh, and when I think you put all those three things together, and you're right, Julia, they they are they are interlinked, intertwined. They all feed off each other. Um, you know, then it's uh, little wonder that we had such a disastrous night uh, on Thursday. Uh, I never want to feel that way again, seeing that exit poll and just feeling that we've just let so many millions of people down across the country against the Tory government, which, you know, has led to an explosion in homelessness, four million children living in poverty, massive gap between London and the South East and the rest of the country and yet we weren't able to beat them and that's a damning indictment of Corbyn and the Corbyn project and as I say the disastrous decision to back a second referendum. I just, I'm quite fascinated by this. You, you, you made no secret of the fact that you were not a, a Corbynista and didn't think that mm. he was a, 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 good, a good prime ministerial candidate. Um, I, I, it seems to me that for actually an awful lot of Labour backbenchers like yourself, actually you would much prefer to have Boris Johnson as prime minister than to have Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister and John McDonnell as Chancellor. Be honest no. with us. Be honest with you. You're, you're saying no. we've let the country down. No. Would you, would, do you think that the British people who you want to, you want to be looked after, do you think they'd be better off right now with Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister than Boris Johnson? The Labour Party, the Labour Party and the Labour movement are the greatest force for good in the history of British politics. And no one man or woman, for that matter, is, is bigger than the party or the movement. So it, we needed a Labour government, even though with serious reservations about uh, Jeremy Corbyn, if he had secured a majority and was able to push forward some of the investment driven growth policies, a proper justice in in terms of uh, making sure that we help the weakest and in our society who need it, but also uh, driving forward in, on infrastructure, the climate change emergency, so many issues where we, we needed left of centre policies. The problem is that they just went far too far and you ended up having uh, a story which led people to feel that our security was not going to be safe in the hands of the Labour government. And in the end, you have to listen to the electorate. They delivered their verdict. Now we have to uh, turn over a page. We need a clean break from Corbyn and Corbynism. We need uh, one more heave would be a disaster for our party. Uh, and we've got to find the right candidate who can do that job. OK, well, who do you think that candidate's going to be? Because we were talking to a, a pollster from Ladbrokes a little bit earlier, uh, saying Rebecca Long-Bailey is a two-to-one favourite, although Lisa Nandy has already moved down to seven-to-two behind her. But but realistically, right now, control of the party is in the Corbynistas' hands. The money is from uh, from Len McCluskey of Unite, very much a Corbynista. Uh, you've got the party machine controlled by them. You've got the party members who are all devout Corbynistas, realistically, it's going to be another Corbynista who wins. Julia, I don't, I don't know how many uh, Labour Party members listen to your show, but if there are any listening right now, I make a plea to them. I say to them, uh, do you want to win elections? Do you want to put our principles into practice? Do you want a Labour Party that is actually a party of government? Uh, please think carefully and answer those questions before you put your cross in the ballot paper for who should be the next leader. Uh, and I genuinely hope that our membership will uh, realize that we must never feel the way we felt at 10 p.m. on Thursday night when we saw uh, that exit poll. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that they will therefore make the right decision. I think that Lisa Nandy answers many of the questions that need to be answered. I think she knows how to rebuild the red wall. She understands that many people only lent their votes to the Conservative Party uh, on Thursday well, well, and that we can bring them back. And what about you? Are you going to throw your hat into the ring? 
No, I have no plans to stand. Uh, no I really plans to stand or you're not going to stand? Those are two different I, things. No, no, I really believe that the next leader of the Labour Party should be a woman. Why? And, uh, Why? Be- because I think it's ridiculous that we've got so many fantastic women MPs. We have more well, women second, MPs. Why does it have to be a woman? Why, don't in... select, why not just elect a good candidate as leader? Why do they have to be a woman? Uh, because I think we've had this kind of bugbear, this albatross run, uh, hanging around our necks for years. But you haven't yeah, had any good fantastic women. Fantastic women MPs who are brilliant, but we haven't had a woman leader. I think we need to put that issue to bed. But I also happen to think that fantastic candidates like Lisa Nandy and Jess Phillips okay. are actually the best people for the job. So it's both best people for the job and... No, if she's the best person women. for the job, you wouldn't have to... It would be irrelevant that she was a woman, wouldn't it? Just finally, though, I know you've got to go. Um, on Friday, we're expecting to see the second reading of the withdrawal agreement bill coming back, the Boris Boris Brexit deal, effectively, coming back to the House of Commons after the Queen's speech on Thursday. Um, how will you vote on that, and how should Labour MPs vote? I can't support Boris's bill because it's going to be a bonfire of uh, consumer rights, in, uh, workers' rights and environmental protections. Uh, what we need is a Brexit which actually protects jobs and livelihoods standards, but also delivers on re- respecting so the wait a minute. So, well, I think, so the British public have just said, um, we're not going to support a party that won't actually deliver Brexit. And you, and you probably then I'm assuming uh, many other Labour MPs, given that you've been very willing to compromise on this issue until at this point, that you will now vote against Brexit. Yet again, having just been told by the British electorate, we want Brexit. Uh, there's so many ways of doing Brexit, and as I've made clear for the last few years... None of those are on the table. We need, we need a Brexit deal which protects jobs and livelihoods, okay. and I don't believe that Boris's jo- uh, deal does that. All right, Stephen Kinnock, thank you so much for joining us, uh, newly elected uh, Labour MP for Aberavon.